Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yin Zeng, the Director of Ocean Initiatives at Western Michigan University's Hennig Institute for Global Education. I also serve as the Director of Timothy Life Center for Chinese Studies. Welcome to Timothy Life Center's webinar series uh, for of uh, fall 2020. Today's webinar is also co-sponsored by the Great Lakes Chinese Consortium. The consortium and its many activities are supported by the seven universities in the Great Lakes area. West Michigan University, Michigan State University, Wayne State University, University of Toledo, Cleveland State University, University at Buffalo, and St. Cloud State University. Today, we are honored to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Tan Ye, Professor of Comparative Literature in Chinese from the University of South Carolina. I would like to invite Dr. Victor Xiong, Professor of History from the WU's College of Arts and Sciences, to introduce Dr. Ye to us. Oh, okay. And um, uh, first, a uh, warm well, welcome to uh, Dr. Ye. And and the, I I knew Dr. Ye uh, a long time ago. I think the, in Beijing, so we 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 live very close to uh, each other. And he live in the Renjiao uh, Shuo compound. I live in in Zhongxianbu, so we're very close. So we went to the same school together. So and I uh, and and uh, we also organize um, English study group. Sometime uh, Dr. Ye would drop in and, and chat with us. That's a long time ago at the Liu, I think it's the Liu Chun's or Liu Fei's house. Maybe you still have a recollections of that uh, right. very precious experience. And 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 Dr. Ye Tan and uh, studied um, Shakespeare in in. Um, Toronto first, uh, before he went on to um, study film and cinema studies at, at NYU. Then he and he earned his PhD in comparative uh, theater from Washington University at St. Louis. So um, he had been teaching at the University of uh, uh, North uh, South Carolina and in the, since the early 90s. So he's uh, uh, definitely well published in that area. And today he's going to deal with a very interesting topic on Hollywood and and, and, and China. So uh, it seems that uh, from uh, the title of the topic, and he he is trying to to address Chinese concern about the so-called cultural invasion, um, and uh, that that it was a uh, uh, sort of overriding concern and in in and a couple of decades ago. But now it seems China has turned the tables. You know, so uh, now it, 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 it's the Hollywood, uh, which is the kowtowing to the Chinese. Uh, uh, for example, the famous actor called uh, Richard Geard, ever since 2008, has never landed a um, contract with a major studio because of his anti-Chinese attitude. So it would be very interesting uh, with, with that kind of background for uh, Dr. Yet to enlighten us on this uh, fascinating topic. Um, go ahead. So I'm done. Xin uh, I'm so happy to see you again. <laughs> many, yeah. many years. Many, many years. Half a right. century ago. Right. right. Yeah. Um, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I will start with uh, the definition or the the face, the faces of Chinese theater and Hollywood. Okay. Um, I want to show you some uh, footage, but the last minute, actually, it was last, uh, the day before or last, I, I kind of omitted, I cut out a lot of footage because I think uh, I don't want to be uh, distracted. Okay, so let's first go over the faces, what happened historically. Okay, um, this is not, I think the, bear with me.
Okay. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, yes, we can. we can hear. We can hear you. Okay. All right. The first phase, okay, is the inspiration uh, introducing American films to China. Okay. China was among the few countries exposed to cinematic culture at a very early stage. A year after he invented cinematography in France, Louis Lumiere sent his cameraman to Shanghai to show some shots. It was not yet a film in the modern sense, so shots of magic acrobatic performances. The historical date was August 18, 1896. Another year had hardly passed when James Recton, an American from Maplewood, New Jersey, arrived in China to exhibit some exhib um, episodes shot in America. In the early episodes, the principle of Hollywood has already been emerged, has already emerged. That is to entertain with novelty and sensuality. In 1897, the first movie review in Chinese history was published in Shanghai. It refers to Richard Chun's show as an American electrical light shadow play. And the word shadow is typically Chinese Taoist. So let me quote uh, this essay, this review. American electric light show play, magical and illusionary, all beyond the imagination. Two fluffy-haired blondes dance in a charmingly naive manner. Two Western wrestlers fought. Two Russian princesses dance to music. A female with a sleeping in a blanket. And this goes on, it's, a, it's too long, but let me uh, read the last line. So, so after he uh, listed all these episodes, uh, he ended with, life is nothing but shadow of bubbles. I don't know how many of you studied Chinese, uh, how many of the students studied Chinese. Dianying, I think you know. Dianying, if we translate literally as Electrical shadow. Okay. That Chinese term for Dianying is perhaps derived from the above review. The first Chinese to enter this growing ele electrical shadow was Lin Shushan, who in 1903 brought back from America a projector and rented a tea house in Beijing to show the footage. At that time, this footage was not even accessible in many parts of the United States. Because in 1905, the whole country had less than 10 movie theaters. Then in 1904, the last few years of the Qing Dynasty. A British official presented a film at the Forbidden City. It was a disaster not because of the content, but because of the, uh, the fire caused by the primitive generator. Even then, after the, the disaster, Empress Dowager, Cixi Taiho, didn't ban film outside the palace, but he did not allow a film to be shown inside the palace. 
And the period of classical Hollywood is usually dated between 1906 and 1927. The Chinese film industry came into being almost simultaneously. Between 1905 and 1908, Fengtai Photograph Factory, Fengtai Zhaoxiangguan, Photograph Factory in Beijing, made the first film, Bing Junshan. Shot with a French camera and a film cassette from a German uh, company in Beijing. It was a picking opera adopted from a popular Chinese novel, The Three Kingdoms. General Huang Zhong, the hero of the film, was filmed by was played by Tan Xinpei, an eminent picking opera performer, patronized by uh, the uh, Empress Dowager. The film was a classic application of the doctrine prevalent in the last years of the Qing Dynasty. That is to treat Chinese learning as the foundation and the Western learning as the utility. Is in Chinese, xi xiu wei ti, zhong xiu wei ti, xi xiu wei yong. It was eight years prior to the establishment establishment of Hollywood. So the early exchanges uh, was not Hollywood and China yet. It was before. It was French, uh, uh, German, and some other people. Okay, But then Hollywood, when it once it appeared in the world, Hollywood, it became a superpower almost immediately. At the turn of the century, American film did not have any superiority in China, where most foreign movies were imported from France. At that time, English and German films were also quite popular. Although China's first encounter with the West was characterized with distrust and resistance, the, the advent of film was never re resisted by the Chinese audience. Within one decade, cinema was established in all the major cities in China. In June 1911, the Qing, issue, the Qing dynasty issued regulations of film plays. So it was not film, but film plays in Shanghai, forbidden, quote, showing film without a license, Unquote. And I quote again, film containing obscenity, unquote. And quote, male and female viewers sitting together. Okay. So it was not very political and it was not very strict comparing with the very stern cultural censorship in the Qing dynasty. It was quite uh, lenient. Exactly a half century later, the Chinese history of film development, this is a move, uh, the title, the Chinese film of film development, which was then the most important film history book in China. And uh, it was very, very politicized. Let me read some of it. Due to the length stagnation of Chinese feudalism, especially to its semi-colonial and semi-feudal condition caused by imperialist invasions, Chinese science and technology was extremely backward. Therefore, Chinese cinema started with film. Uh, try that again. Can you hear me? Yeah. 谢老师,不好意思,打讲您一下,我现在请胡毅老师帮着翻页,他用,您看看应该到哪一页了,到此。我知道,我可以翻,可以翻,okay, uh, uh, sorry, I don't have many pictures, because, because I, I, as uh, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, to uh, avoid distracting you, I, I deleted uh, many, many photos. 
So this is the photo I need. This is Huang Zhong. Okay. Okay. For each face, I have only one photo. So let's keep going. So in this comment, okay, reading it today, uh, uh, reading uh, the paragraph today uh, from the Chinese history of film and development, okay, we may feel that the above summary is politicized. But given the situation in the 1960s, when all the Western films were banned in China and the Sino-Western cultural exchanges had been withheld for more than a decade, it took some courage for the authors to review the truth that the first American movies were welcomed in China. As a result, when the Cultural Revolution took place in 1966, the copy of the book, the copy of the Chinese history of film development were burned and all of the authors were persecuted. By 1909, there were already more than 10,000 cinemas in the United States. About 10 years after the First World War, Hollywood became the superpower of the film world. Supported by peaceful domestic environment and the rapid economic growth, a group of talented individuals started to shape effectively the Hollywood system. Like the Oriental Theater, this, this is the name of the theater, I think it's still in, uh, in Hollywood, Oriental Theater, constructed in America in 1920s. Oriental images created by Hollywood were stereotyped, but not always, as many film historians assert negative. Okay, instead of, the, of its obvious commercial purposes, which was devoid of any general interest in comprehending the inscrutable, i.e. the Chinese, Hollywood never formed a unified perception for or against Chinese. Yeah. Hollywood, I don't believe is, a, is, a, is a, as some people say, is a, uh, the tool of invasion. Um, I think Hollywood just just a filmmaking system, okay, like in any other countries. Sometimes it is politicized, but now not always. I'm going to give you some examples, okay? okay it, it, there are different examples. The 16 part Yellow Menace, Huang Huo, produced in 1960, is undoubtedly a shining example of racist against Asians. But Broken Blossoms, which was often used to exemplify the distorted image of Chinese people, is not exactly the case. Direct, directed by D.W. Griffiths in 1919, it depicted a sensitive Chinese man serves a Western girl abused by her father. Consequently, he is murdered by her father. The victim in the in the tale, that's the father. The Chinese guy appearing in this film as mystic and feminine, but, but never evil. His admiration for the girl is spiritual, and his caring for her is unselfish. As climbed in the prologue of Broken Blossoms, it, it said that the Chinese people are very kind. Okay, uh, they uh, are advocates of Confucius virtues, such as gentleness and benevolence. These two films are better understood in their historical context. The Yellow Menace is a reenactment of a long time. Uh, nightmare caused by Mongolian invasion of, the, of Europe, whereas Broken Blossom 
serves as a contemporary reminder of the fragility of China in the face of Western invasions. Okay, there's another movie it's called Bitter Tea of General Yan. Well, the former created a prototype of the wise and wicked detective who functions well in the dramatic situation, but reveals little complexity in characterization. The latter presents a much more complicated warlord who is at the same time pervert and gallant. Okay. Uh, if you look at the 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 the, the, the poster, uh, which is quite quite uh, uh, realistic, so although General Yan is is a Chinese, but it was played by a, an American. During the silent movie era, most of Chinese filmmakers were from the drama circle, whose film training was minimal. Like their counterparts in Japan, Chinese filmmakers' education was a combination of old-fashioned apprenticeship in the studio and observation of Hollywood products. Thematically, Hollywood did not exert any significant influence on the Chinese film industry. Technically, however, China learned a great deal from America, especially from Hollywood. Practical skills, skills such as analytical editing, soft focus, background masking, that is, background masking is a blocking off parts of the film to create a different shape within the frame, and so on, were all borrowed from Hollywood. During the first phase, Hollywood treated China as a source of exotism to attract its domestic audience rather than a potential market in the international competition. There is no record that any of those films were shown in China. So the early films like uh, uh, General Yan were not shown in China. Once Hollywood was ready to conquer the world, the first country it, its eyes turned to was China. For a time, American uh, movie makers seriously contemplated taking advantage of China's cheap labor and material, as well as its exotic scenery. The first joint venture, American Oriental Picture Company, this is the name, American Picture uh, Oriental Picture Company, was established in 1926. Shattered Jade fated to be reunited. This is another Chinese movie. It's the first Chinese movie made with American money, and it was a melodrama derived from the Chinese classical theater. Had the first civil war not broken in China, and thus made further investment impossible, making the film in China could have been a very profitable business for Hollywood. Because of the war, Hollywood gave up the idea of pro produce, producing films in China, and instead it doubled its efforts to, to export film to this country. This is the first phase. So next phase, okay. Hollywood golden years in China. In the year 1927, okay, Hollywood and China became very, very different now because Hollywood was making movies. It entered its golden age, and China was making wars, fighting each other. Okay, So China basically, at that period, didn't have time to really learn seriously from China, from a Hollywood, and uh, it could not have enough money and time to make its own film either. 
Well, Chinese were busy making film against each other. Hollywood was busy making films for the world, including China. Before long, Hollywood dominated the global market. The average percentage of Hollywood films on the international market was 75%. So internationally, in the early or in the middle 20s, 1920s, 75 of the movies all over the world were produced in Hollywood. And in China, okay, the film in China, shown in China, okay, it's almost 20, uh, 90% from Hollywood. So when China was undergoing its first civil war, the films in the big cities, 90%, or from Hollywood. In 1936, for example, China imported 397 foreign films, of which 328 were made by Hollywood. The transition from silent to sound films was complicated. Okay, well, old comedians like Chaplin could still cheer Chinese up. The new tragedian like Greta Garbo had already begun to soften Chinese hearts. Rather than tempering the advantage of Hollywood, the depression boosted Hollywood, driving millions of the people to cinemas for a temporary forget, for them to temporarily forget their worries. During the phase, Hollywood gained the name of Dream Factory. Because if you don't have it during the, uh, your uh, daily life, okay, you, you dream something. Okay? So Hollywood made the dream perfect. Escapism, some modern Puritans would also call it uh, Fabianism, served this purpose, both for Americans during the Depression and for Chinese during the war. Learning more teaching from Hollywood, the first generation of Chinese movie, ma movie makers formally became standardized Hollywood worshippers. Usually a film would start with a panoramic view, and that was followed by a long shot, a medium shot, and the family a close up. And uh, street, street angle, three point lighting. Uh, if you don't know uh, cinema, uh, Three-point lighting means lighting from three different angles. That is the key light, backlight, and filling light. And the simple dialogue for the mainstream in Chinese cinema. And they learned all this from Hollywood. So in that period, Hollywood, the, 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 the plot is very complicated, but the, the dialogue was relatively simple. When the war of resistance against Japan broke out in 1937, Hollywood produced one of the most pro-China films, Good Earth, Ba Di. This one, uh, this um, this novel, uh, based on the novel Good Earth, uh, was uh, written by Pearl Buck, and uh, I, I think won her uh, uh, Oscar. Uh, oh, not Oscar, uh, Nobel, Nobel for Literature. It was about a poor peasant and his wife, how to survive in the hard times. Again, again both uh, the male and female lead were played by Americans, but the, the lady, the female lead, won an Oscar in just for this movie. Hollywood golden years were also most 
successful years in China. Never did Hollywood show more films in China, like The Wizard of Oz, Miss Smith Goes to Washington, Pony Angels Have Wings, Stack, Stage Wagon, just to name a few. At the end of this phase, more than 4,000 Hollywood movies have been shown in China. Okay, so the second phase, there were 400 movies there had been shown. They, they had been shown in China, 4,000 American movies. Okay, so we, we think about culture uh, influence. That's a big cultural influence in China. And China also learned something with Hollywood, like the musical. Okay. We produce our own musical, uh, which was not very successful. Yes, Wan Zi Qian Hong, 10,000 uh, violets and 1,000 red blossoms. Wan Zi Qian It was not uh, very uh, successful, but it was a very, very obvious warning or copying. Okay, from Hollywood. And then we have some more successful movies, uh, more realistic movies, uh, like Street Angel, Ma Lu Tian Shi. Okay, that is very, very uh, serious learning. Directed, directed by Yuan Mu Zhi, okay, it was very serious learning about Hollywood's realistic movies. And uh, also, um, the movie born some resemblance to American realistic acting and mise en scène, Meng Tai Chi. Okay. Unlike their French or Italian counterparts, Chinese filmmakers made no efforts to avoid thematic repetition of Hollywood. If you also uh, learn uh, French movies or Italian movies, the movie makers there consciously avoid learning slavishly from Hollywood. But Chinese movie makers didn't show that. Okay? They really, uh, at that time at least, think that Hollywood was perfect. The Chinese movie like Burning Red Lotus Temple was a glorification of martial art okay, produced by Bright Star Studio, Mingxing, a studio in Shanghai, was successful enough to compete with Hollywood films. At that time, we learned Hollywood, but, but most of the movies were uh, not, not, as far as the quality is concerned, not as good as Hollywood because they had more money and more experienced uh, movie makers, okay? In Hollywood, I would say, it's not just Hollywood, American Hollywood, a lot of talent in Hollywood are from all over the world, especially from Europe. And then later on, like Ang Lee, okay, they're from China. Ang Lee, uh, Wu Yusen, okay? Okay, and then the Sino-Japanese war broke out, okay, Hollywood, became very, very friendly, okay? And uh, this is a, a very common uh, bill, okay? All over the country, United China Relief, uh, Zhongguo, so people donate a lot of money to support Chinese people's war against Japan. And then there's a movie, Why We Fight, this movie was directed by the same person uh, okay, who directed a movie that was labeled as a bad racist a movie against China. Okay, this movie is commissioned by American Department of War. This is a 
Chinese people, what ordinary people will throw from Wuhan to Chongqing? Okay. It was directed by the same director who directed uh, General Yan's better tea. Okay. General Yan was a very, very evil person, cunningly. But this movie directed by the same this is this documentary directed by the same uh, director was very a hundred percent positive about the Chinese. Okay. Uh, and sometimes um, in this movie um, I didn't show the, the footage, but at the very beginning the movie says China, the uh, documentary says China invented gunpowder, but Chinese people never used gunpowder in wars, in fighting. It is a very nice, good uh, intentioned uh, way to, to, to glorify Chinese, but actually Chinese people uh, did use gunpowder uh, in fighting. Okay, like somewhere you, you, you see a lot of uh, Huan Liu Zhen, fire, bull, uh, battle, that's a lot of uh, Chinese a way to use uh, gunpowder. Okay, the next period, okay, mouse, mouse period, before the government started banning, formally banned Hollywood in China, there was a very short period when communists took over of tolerance. A fact vividly recorded in the letter by an American wife of an engineer in, engineer in 1949. When both Chinese and American governments were unsure of how to treat each other. So this is a, a quote from uh, the engineer's wife. I expected that American books, magazines, would be banned, and that surely no more American movies would be shown. Our pre-liberation fears have not been materialized, and there was no change in our way of living so far. American movies are still being shown. I saw Frank Sinatra, okay, and so on in Eve. It happens in Brooklyn last week. Two rows of Balu, I mean, the PRA soldiers, sat in front of us, enjoyed Jimmy Duran's acting enormously, end quote. The period of tolerance ended in 19, October uh, 1950 when the Korean War broke out. So. We don't want to politicize, politicize the, the relationship between China and Hollywood, but it ha, has been influenced by po politics, like the wars. Okay, so the war broke out, and that kept American movies from the public, and also it seriously persecuted Chinese filmmakers okay, who favored Hollywood. The third generation of Chinese moviemakers, who had been many Chinese, who had studied Chinese, many Hollywood movies in the 40s, began to, do, to make their film under the most severe censorship. Okay. After Mao Zedong launched the first nationwide criticism against secret history of the Qing Palace, Qing Gong Mish, a film uh, which portrays Emperor Guangxi in the, as a hero for reforming China through learning from the West. So this movie was personally criticized by Chairman Mao. Um, to my recollection, I, I don't remember any country, any leader uh, of the country uh, start a criticism against a single film. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is the only example, okay, uh, a nation uh, leader, okay, 
uh, criticize a film. With the absence of diplomatic relation between the U.S. and the PRC, Chinese filmmakers and the general public had no access to Hollywood made in 1950s and 1960s. During the first half of this phase, most of the foreign films in China were imported from the Soviet Union and Korea and, and uh, Albania. Okay. However, okay, unlike a lot of people believe, the film students actually still have time to view movies internally. Okay. Oh, sometimes some students from privileged schools could view, view American films. Okay. Um, I think Xiong Lao Xiong Lao Ran and I were both students at the Beijing Jingshan School. And we went, we had a chance to uh, view an American movie, Bai Wan Yin Bang, okay, a million uh, dollars, okay, or Gone with the Wind, yeah. quote and unquote internally as an English class, okay. And then next period, okay, this period, this is a, the, one of the few few films uh, we had a chance uh, as uh, uh, students, even under very strict uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, control. The next period, idolization, post modern era. This is a period when Hollywood was idolized, was treated as, as a very important film uh, example, a, a good teacher for Chinese filmmakers. I think I will uh, skip the discussion about the fifth generation. I think I think uh, I need to save some time for the questions. Okay. So during this period, Chinese people begin to make uh, feel more. Uh, uh, more quote and unquote Chinese. This lady, uh, Chen Tong, Joy Chen, is now in America and she made uh, two movies in the United States. Okay, uh, but uh, one is totally about China, about a Sandan girl, a girl who was sent to uh, the countryside. And the other one is about a, a romantic story between the Chinese and the West. Okay. Okay, post Deng era, that's what we are uh, experiencing now. Okay, when China first opened its door, uh, for the second time opened its door, okay, for the first time being uh, the anti-Japanese war, the second time is, is, I think, signified by Deng Xiaoping's visit to America. So this is a page from a National Geographic, okay. I think America at that time was very friendly, okay. And they started China with true uh, admiration. This is Zheng He Xia Xiyang. There was a eunuch in the Ming Dynasty who went to uh, who sailed on the Pacific and, and visited many countries. So on the magazine page. This is the boat, okay, Zheng He and, the, and his soldiers. The, this fleet had, I, can't, I think, 50 uh, boats. This is one of the leading boats. And this is the smaller one. You see the size. The smaller one was uh, the size of Columbus boat. Who, uh, with this, he visited. Uh, he discovered America. This, this is Chinese in the Ming Dynasty. This is uh, Columbus. Okay, so 
It used a lot of uh, examples. It's, it's a long story. It used a lot of examples to show China has a good tradition and 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 they have a very nice cultural heritage. So uh, this period again, China has experienced some conf conflict feelings, learning from Hollywood and also uh, it's kind of a, a it developed a sensitive about Hollywood's soup against Hollywood's superiority because Chinese people began to uh, learn from other filmmakers and it's filmmakers from other countries. Okay. Uh, Oh, what happened? I, 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 what happened? Can you see this to this? No. Okay, no, 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 I'm so sorry. I, I thought you could see the pictures. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I thought you could all see it. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, stop here. This is when China first opened the door to America, when Deng Xiaoping visited America. American people then okay, were very friendly, and uh, they uh, started learning Chinese, not superficially, but seriously, uh, historically. So this is... A, National Ge Geographic is a special issue about Chinese culture. Okay. Now, next page, please. Okay. But then, recently, not very recent, but like 20 years ago, Chinese filmmakers began to doubt Hollywood. Okay. Because uh, I think Okay. Many of the people, um, uh, many of the Chinese directors visited America. Some studied in America for a reasonably a long time. Okay, like Wu Tianming, the director of uh, Changing Face, Bian Lian, uh, Chen Kai Ge, Peng Xiaolian, okay, all of these important film figures, Tian, Tian Zhuang Zhuang, they all studied in, in America and, and for a long time. Peng Xiaolian, got her uh, uh, degree of film editing uh, from NYU, okay? And Chen Kai studied for one, uh, more than one semester, almost one school year, okay? At that time, I was at NYU, but uh, Chen Kai didn't show up at the classes very often, though, okay? But then uh, China begins to... Uh, doubt about the authority of Hollywood. Should we also learn from other countries? Actually, um, they started learning because of the opening policy. The Chinese, the Chinese directors have more opportunities to learn from the West. Okay, yeah, yeah. next please. Okay, to live is a result of learning, of the learning. It's, it's uh, from Italian cinema, okay? okay. This, this movie was directed by uh, Zhang Yimou, but, okay, he won a award, but his uh, speech at the award-winning ceremony is very meaningful. Let me read this, okay? Because for this movie, Gong Li, uh, the female lead, 
won the best uh, actress. Okay. I am happy for Gong Li, the female lead, and to live, and Ge Yu, the male lead, not simply because they both received awards from their performances in my film. What makes me feel more excited is that their, their awards prove that European and American gentility have started acknowledging our performers. They are well appreciating Chinese films. They no longer focus on superficial oriental exoticism. Instead, they are now able to pay attention to the performer's portrayal of the characters. They do not keep pursuing Chinese film with a novelty hunting mentality anymore. But compare with them, with films made in other countries, uh, from the perspective of human race, I hope Chinese performers will be uh, able to win more awards. This is a, a Zhang Yimou's response to Gong Li's uh, winning uh, the best uh, actress. Okay. There's a certain kind of resentment there. Now, viewing Hollywood as a rival, the, feel the fifth generation now are unwilling to acknowledge their learning from Hollywood. Okay. Uh, they rather, they rather uh, like like Tian Zhuang Rao, they would rather call uh, the, the Chinese uh, older generation, movie making generation, as their examples. Like Fei Mu, Fei Mu is the fifth gen, fourth generation. Okay. Next page. Next slide. Okay. And Wu Tianming, CEO, is the name of a Chinese movie. Okay. This picture is a picture of tires factory in my state, in Camden, South Carolina, okay? This is the first Chinese private company, okay? In America, this is the first investment, the big investment. And maybe some of you have used it. It's, it's not very, very, uh, popular, but it's getting there. It's called a uh, higher, high refrigerator. High refrigerator uh, has quite a few locations, and the one location was in is still in South Carolina. And, and what do you mean after his um, study in the United States, he went back to China, and this is the first movie. Uh, oh, this is the second movie after he returned to China. There was kind of a controversy about his staying in China after the Tiananmen incident. However, this movie, in Wu Tianming's movie, okay, the governor of my state, the real governor of my state, okay, was portrayed as a very positive, very nice person. Okay. Actually, uh, it was more like a uh, docudrama. This movie was based on the story okay, of Higher Factory. And it, first, uh, it became the first movie that glorified American politicians uh, at that level, okay, as, a, as a governor. Okay. And then Wu Tianming feel that the most important part for Chinese to learn from the Hollywood, okay? It's not just the technique. We have uh, the basics, okay? We know how to make a movie, how to, the format of, of uh, editing, okay? The most important is the mentality. It is still the script. So Wu Tianming in 2008, Wu Tianming organized, sponsored with the support of Shanxi, provincial government, we started a first movie, a first movie making, uh, a movie, a screen script making seminar. Okay, next page. Okay, this seminar, okay, uh, Wu Tianming invited 
Richard Waters from University of Southern California, and uh, Janet Lablace from New York NYU uh, Cinema Studies. Okay, and and and, and uh, Qi Huangshan, maybe you know him. Qi Huangshan is a very famous Chinese uh, performer. Okay, functioned as as uh, the, the coordinator. I was the uh, interpreter for two weeks. Okay, for two weeks, Chinese uh, young, budding Chinese movie makers, uh, movie writers, okay, script writers, more than one hundred of them, studied Hollywood movie script craft taught by two American professors. Each of them uh, lectured for one week. Okay, I'm also the interpreter for for the whole thing. Okay, and later on, it um, the lectures were uh, collected and published by the Chinese Film Press, and it is entitled uh, "Open the Door." Kangkaiman. I worry if you are going to, in the future, you're going to learn more about, about uh, Chinese learning, serious learning from Hollywood. This is a very good book to uh, to uh, to consult with. Okay, but after obtaining finished this one, this is the first ever, the largest one. More than 100 Chinese young script writers attended. And the entrance entrance ticket was nothing but one. If you want to enter this for free, two weeks seminar, okay, you have to have the experience of filming one of your own scripts. So all of them are very young, but very reasonably experienced uh, young playwrights, uh, screenwrites. Okay, they really learned a lot from American teachers. Okay, Wu Tianming was going to do a, a second and third and fourth ones. However, um, his untimely death prevented him from doing so. Okay, um, now his daughter Wu Yan is carried is, is carrying his torch and started making okay organizing more seminars learning from Hollywood, mainly. But in the meantime, uh, because the, the, the horizon now is much, much bigger. So his daughter, Wu Yan Yan, is organizing the seminar, not from only learning from Hollywood, but also from other uh, movie cultures, like French, like Spanish, like German uh, cinemas, so it's a very um, good continuation of learning. Okay. Okay. Next page. Um, I will end my talk here. Uh,